Hello, welcome to Quark Talk. I'm Crystal here on Think Tech on the 10th of January. Still bringing in the good luck and good vibe for the new year 2017. We're going to be talking about some great energy. What do I mean by that? Energy and competition, because sometimes competition brings energy onto the table. It strives you forward, it motivates you, and inspires you to do greatness, right? So today, we're going to have a little fun angle on the concept of competition, and that is through the beauty contest. Now, we've done beauty contests before, but that was on more like behind the scenes. This time, we're going to talk to two beautiful beauty queens and their experience in competition and what it really means to be competitive, for better or for worse. So welcome. All right. So. Lovely lady next to me, Steph. Now, Steph has been here before, and she's the one who, I'll never forget this, and I'm going to remind everyone that she taught me what butt glue is, and we'll talk about that later. Okay? Derek, do you know what that is? Of course. Oh, okay. Who so, does it? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Steph Wang has a huge title. I mean, she's got titles. Should I even start with the most recent one is 2017 Miss Hawaii Chinese. Mm -hmm. And that was very recent. Like, in September. September, mm -hmm. wow. And your previous titles were 2015 Miss Chinatown Hawaii. Yes. And 2012 Miss Narcissa Second Princess. Yes, that was my first pageant ever. So How that's old were you? I was 19. Oh. <laughs> and now you're a whopping 20 something. <laughs> oh, you old lady. <laughs> Shh, don't tell anyone my age. Okay. Well, let's not go there, right? Okay. Dara, Miss Dara Dunn, she was Miss Chinatown USA in 2003, which she hates to spell out. But you know what? Beauty speaks yes, for that itself. Was 14 years ago. <laughs> People weren't even born yet. You I'm know, no, to these young dragon. pretty girls. <laughs> Are you a dragon? No, I'm a rooster. This is oh, actually my rooster year. Oh, wait, so you're not. It. So you're 24. Yes. <laughs> I'm <a> <laughs> That's my story, and I'm not sticking to it. <laughs> okay, all right. But it's also the 60th anniversary that Miss Chinatown USA is celebrating. Absolutely. So, yeah. And oh, I've got one more title for you. You were 2005 Miss Narcissus Queen. Yes. Now, yeah. I had the honor of emceeing the Narcissus pageant last weekend, oh. and it was interesting to see what the concept of a beauty pageant is and the competitive nature behind it and between girls and what people aspire to be through trying to gain a title. So it's really quite interesting. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about this. Um, girls, first of all, do you find yourselves competitive by nature? Do you think that's something that's innate or you do that for a reason? What's your definition of competition, healthy competition? I've always been competitive by nature. I think just ever since I was a small girl, uh -huh. I think I just always wanted to become the best version of myself. And okay. whether it was through academics or sports, I didn't really play that much sports. But when I did in PE, I would always want to be the best. And I think that's what really drives me to succeed. Do you think the parents play an important role in that competitive nature? Or that was you? Well, I was, I was blessed to be able to, to go to schools in a bunch of different places. I remember in Hong Kong, in even preschool, starting from preschool, I would ex excel academically. And what we'd get in school was a awards. And what, that's yes. what I really wanted was to get the awards and to bring home to my parents and to make them proud. I think that's what really drove me to want to be competitive and to become wow. the best version of myself. That's really interesting you say that because a lot of people aren't aware education system in the East is very strongly based on competition. Everything's about number one, number two, number three, right. which I hated. But I'm surprised and I'm glad to know that you thrived in that type of uh, <laughs> environment. Mm -hmm. So good on you. What about you, Dara? What's your competitive I nature? I am one of four and I'm the youngest. Ah. So it's I mean, I, I guess girls you or four, I have two older sisters and one older brother. Okay. So, um, yeah, the boy's the firstborn, but poor thing, he gets, like, no bathroom time. And growing <laughs> up, he just got no talk time either. <laughs> As a boy in a Chinese family, didn't he get all the attention? Or? Well, one would think, but, I mean, I think we were just so blessed and so fortunate. We had both sets of grandparents. We had aunties, uncles. We were the only grandchildren. So we kind of never wanted for love or attention because we had so much and we were so... So blessed and so okay. fortunate, but um, yeah. And then going to school, my parents always just told us, "Do your best." So even when we started pageants, it wasn't to win; it was to make friends and to, you know, just push yourself to see what you could do. And uh -huh. so it was actually, I guess, going for Miss Congeniality a little bit more than the mm -hmm. title because you wanted to get the full experience and make friends and right. lasting relationships. But so. you say you're the number, you're the baby of the family. How does that make you more competitive? You had to kind of grab the attention of everyone or I thought babies were always no, cuddled with all the attention. It's kind of weird like even my older siblings they always gave me love and attention and so I didn't really you know 
fight for it or, or want for it. Right. And, yeah. So you were the Very spoiled fortunate. little one. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to get you you'll have to ask them. <laughs> okay. But no, I mean I I was totally fine with hand me downs and you yeah. know all those things that the youngest one gets. Yeah. But it, it was overall and still is a, a wonderful experience. My siblings and I are very close. Oh, lucky. Yeah. And you have one brother. Yeah, well, I, yes, I have a younger brother. We're 11 months apart, so we're oh, wow. Irish twins. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. yeah so. Are you competitive with each other? Um, we, we, could, we could be. I mean, I think more so when we were younger, I was, he was more competitive with me because I was the one bringing home all the awards, and then as uh, we got older, it kind of switched around, and oh, so okay. he, yeah, so. That's interesting, you know, growing <laughs> up competition between siblings, mm -hmm. because sometimes some, some siblings are in the limelight always, and one is always in the shadow, right. and they can, you know, present problems. You can get a chip on your shoulder, you can have insecurity complexes, or the other way around. Well, my sister Dina actually was the first to do a pageant. Okay. And she loved it so much, she's the one who entered Dembi and Me. So it wasn't oh. like, I want to get all these accolades and I want all the crowns. Uh -huh. It was like, I love this so much, I want my sisters to be a part of it too. That's so, nice way to yeah, do that. so she would enter us like the morning of, the night before. She's what? Like, it was crazy. She's like, I promise I'll help you with everything. I'll help you with hair and makeup. Just show up. <laughs> How did your so, parents feel about you entering? They well, loved like, it. Yeah, as long as we, we did it for the right reasons. Right, mm -hmm. right. Yeah. So I was talking to somebody, uh, I don't remember what, but you know, the concept of pageants, there, it seems to be two schools of thoughts. There are some Chinese parents who think, oh yeah, go do it. It's a great experience. It'll encourage your confidence and exposure. Mm -hmm. But then there's the other half, more traditional, if you will, I don't know, they go, God, you're not allowed to enter, no way, you're not going to be put on stage to be judged by people and God forbid wear a bikini, you know, <laughs> flaunting your body, so what do you think? Well, Any? my parents were actually on opposite ends, so my oh. mom was like, go for it, you know, she, it'll be a great experience, and when I was 19, entering my first pageant, I was at a, a time in my life where I was not the most confident, I was okay. stuck in a box, and I wanted to do something that would make me step out of my comfort zone. And growing up here, the pageant culture is so big, especially in Chinatown, you see the posters everywhere. So I was like, you know what, why not? And I decided to, to run in Narcissus. Mm -hmm. But my dad was the, what you said before about like, you know, no, you're not gonna stand on stage with your swimsuit and, you know, there's a, there's a stigma on pageantry. You right, know, like, right. Like all, all the like background, I don't well, know, you're you hear all these rumors, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And, but I mean, in the end, he saw how much growth I, I had I got from the pageant, mm. and I mean in the end, I think he's just re he's very supportive now, and that's what I'm really grateful. Well, for. you proved him, right? <laughs> right. Like, hey, you can do it, and it doesn't tarnish your image. You can do but it in a swimsuit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but the narcissist didn't have a swimsuit aspect. Is there no, a reason there for that? Was wasn't there? Was there used to be? Not, not, not in my year. Wait, you had one back in the back then? I actually don't remember. <laughs> Should I repeat that that was 14 years ago? <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. that was actually 12 years ago mm -hmm. for me. No, I can't remember. I, I have no idea. Do you think there's any exploitation in any of these pageants? No, 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 no. no. Not that I've, and I've competed in a lot of pageants in Hawaii, and I haven't had a negative experience mm -hmm. at all. Except for like the dirty old guys who we are going to get those anywhere though, right? Even if you're not like a title holder in yeah. life, I'm like, uh, you don't have to enter a pageant for that, <laughs> right? My point. And you were a flight attendant at Hawaii Airlines. Yes. So you must get a lot of that. Uh, mm. No. I mean, it's life. It's people. You just deal yeah. With people. Right. Good yeah. point. But I want to tack on that. The fact mm -hmm. that you um, you you fly now. You have a nice professional career flying everywhere around seeing the world. Do you think that your title brought you to where you are today? Or how much did that crown or crowns affect who you are today? Well, definitely you have to do public speaking mm -hmm. when you're in that role. And I was a speech major at UH, so oh, no wonder. I don't know if that's the catalyst that you know, brought me to my career now. I don't, I don't think so. I think that was just part of, I don't know, I like to talk. <laughs> Okay. And that's a lot Rooster, of you know, right? Yes, yeah, right. right. <laughs> and that's a lot of what you do. Is a, I mean, you're constantly interacting with people. So yes. mm. I don't know. I'm not sure. Well, maybe part egg. of your personality brought you to the pageant because you're so comfortable on stage and interacting with everyone. So it's all maybe. right. I'd love. We'll go with that answer. <laughs> <laughs> sure. I mean, it takes a certain type of people. That's what I'm trying to get at. Yeah. Right. Definitely. So I have a question. So me being like dreading speech at UH, so I actually <laughs> oh. try to avoid it as much as possible. Like, what kind of kinds of advice do you have for someone who isn't the most comfortable with public speaking, but is, is really wants it? I think I've. 
I've come a long way in terms of speaking in front of people, but I feel like there's definitely always room for improvement. I would say just do it more. <laughs> like, just find audiences. Like, this, I think, is awesome. Like, it's mm -hmm. such a, yes, there is no, quote, unquote, you know, live audience or anything, but I just feel like the more you do it, Oh, it's live, though. You... It's streaming right now. Oh, okay. Like, somebody <laughs> can tweet something to you right yeah, now. Yeah, you can tweet me. You know? Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but, I mean, just do it more. The more you do things and practice, it, it yeah. just gets better and you get more comfortable and it becomes more a second skin, I think. But some You're people naturally, it. right, yeah. Steph? Some people naturally are comfortable in front of the camera and some people right. aren't, no matter what. Or comedians, yeah. they say, actually, behind the scenes, they're very shy, shy people. people. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that is a good question of how, how you overcome certain things. But maybe the concept of competition does help you confront those fears, right? For sure. It brings yeah. all your insecurities on the table and you've got to... Right. You, you can't hide, mm -hmm. basically. Mm -hmm. Well, especially in San Francisco, which you will be going to very yes. shortly. I mean, you're just exposed to pretty much all of San Francisco's Chinatown. And I believe San Francisco has the second largest Chinese population after China. Mm -hmm. So this is huge. When I did it years ago, <laughs> I still remember our parade had 750,000 people on it. It was you actually just, remember the number? It was huge wow. because I had never really? participated in something that was just so heavily community oriented and what an experience it was and just visiting all of the different um, what do you call those uh, the groups where where you're part of that village and part of oh, that organization society, oh, society. thank you right, yes yeah. and just going to see them and they're just so culturally proud I mean it makes do you, you proud to be Chinese too. well I was gonna ask do you yeah. think it's um, Chinese are innately competitive yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah, like you said, an academic. Right. There's that stereotype, you yeah. know, Asians, not Asians. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's redundant. A competitive Chinese. Right? Right? Yeah. Yeah. I All would right. think so. Yeah. And but in a good way. I was going to say, so what's a bad way? Them. What's a negative way to be competitive? Or what's being over competitive? You Just must have seen it through the pageant. Some girls, you know, ugly stuff must have. When you happened. focus, I think, too much on other people mm, instead of focusing yourself. on yourself. Yeah, okay. I, I like to think of competition as a competition with yourself. Who you were yesterday is different from who you are today and even tomorrow. So if you want to become a better person and you know, be improved in any way, even, even outside of pageantry, it doesn't have to be a pageant. Right, that's just a little metaphor of life, right? right. Yeah, I right. mean, the big little microcosm and the whole world out there waiting for you to show them what you got. Mm -hmm. um, do you have I, like big dreams, big ideas of where you want to be? Oh. Both of you. I don't yeah. care. Yeah. I, mean, yes. I mean, it's an ongoing process, right? I used to tell my mom I was going to be the first female president of the United States. <laughs> that changed a lot over the years. But, <laughs> but yeah, I think we always have big dreams and, and big hopes. Good. And, mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. What's yours? I, I mean, I have so many different aspirations. I think that's that's almost like my, my problem is I want to be, I want to, I want to save the world. I tell everyone I'm going to save the world, whether it's environmentally or just helping people around the, around the world. And I also want to be an, a voice actor and a model. You are and a, a voice business. actor. I am, but I want to be even more. I want to be a... You want to be the next, like, not Moana, but yeah. whatever the next yeah, the, film is. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So I think that it's good to have big dreams and big goals because even if you don't reach it per se i'm sure just the journey along the way you can grow so much and then you can you become the person who is meant to, ha to have those dreams you nailed it stuff it's the journey it's <gasps> yes. the journey mm -hmm. itself so we're going to take a quick break before we continue this journey onto these lovely ladies and their lives forward and the impact their competition had on their lives today so don't go away and i've got some pretty pictures for you to see aloha i'm reg baker the host of business in hawaii that broadcasts live every thursday from 2 to 2 30. Today we were very fortunate enough to have uh, Dr. Miller and her service dog, Muffin. Uh, we talked about the ADA and we covered some of the different do's and don'ts of having service dogs in your establishment uh, and how to sniff out the fakes. Please uh, tune in for Business in Hawaii on Thursday to find out all about service dogs. Aloha. Hello and aloha. My name is Raya Salter and I am the host of Power Up Hawaii, where Hawaii comes together to figure out how we're going to work towards a clean and renewable energy future. We have exciting conversations with all kinds of stakeholders, everyone who needs to come together to talk about renewable energy, be they engineers, advocates, lawyers, utility executives, musicians or artists, to see how we can come together to make a renewable future. Tuesdays at 1 p.m.
All right, back here on Pop Top. So we're talking about competition through beauty pageants. And there's a small little detail that I forgot to uh, mention, is that I too, which I usually don't like to admit, but because it's relevant to today's topic, that I, I myself was in Miss Chinatown, but this was like so long ago that I couldn't even find any photos of it. In fact, I did find one that's a black and white photo. It's not because oh. it's black and white. <laughs> now, this is not that old. It's only 1987. <laughs> 30 years, girls. Oh my so God. that Actually, was no, I love nice. it. Chinatown. Yeah, San Francisco. you look younger now. Yeah. Oh, come on. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. You guys are. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, so that was my experience um, and what it brought me to Asia because, you know, you get a trip to. To yeah. Asia, and for me, that was my big thing. I I, I entered because I thought, oh, if you get even as the first three, um, you know, positions, you can get a free trip to Asia, and that was what I did it for. <laughs> I didn't do it for for winning. So anyway, it's interesting how things carry you forward, and and a title does bring you somewhere, and you can use it for to your advantage, um, or you can abuse it. There are people who have abused privileges with the title. Um, but I also want to share now, Dara, sorry, I don't have a picture of yours no, because, because you I couldn't think find one on. It was like point and shoot back in the day and I have no idea where the prints are. So. How come you never kept or maybe your parents kept photos maybe. not that long ago? I know, but yeah. Okay, well. Sorry. Sorry to disappoint you guys. Well, take your word then. You were just I swear. <laughs> okay. okay, and Steph has some gorgeous pictures mm -hmm. um, from last year, I think. Oh, no, that's me. Ah! <laughs> oh, my God. I love it. I love it. Oh, you Zuri didn't even know that was me. That's 19. <laughs> look at the date there. 1987. <laughs> 30 years ago. Okay, the only reason I have this photo is because there's a similar one of Steph in the big, beautiful, <laughs> recent oh, oh my gosh. Stuff. Yeah. Look at that. Look at that one. Really. <laughs> I Did everybody it. require it? Look how pretty. That, I mean, it's just so noble, right? That, yeah. That cake was made for you. Yeah. yeah. For sure. There's something that's about the that. That's, that's, that's a perpetual cloak. So yeah, um, it's really pretty. That. Very royal. Um, and then there's the picture of you being crowned. And I think that oh, represents oh, a lot. There's a very um, immediate moment of, of excitement and, and pure joy. Yeah, I mean, it's something it. very, it's so very real. sweet and yeah. real about that photo. Do you remember what you were thinking when you were going through that? The, actually, that photo was taken, um, that was my second crowning because actually the crown fell off my head oh. and I, had, I caught it. And then my friend. <laughs> oh, we didn't get that my camera. friend. <laughs> nice. Oh, I have footage. I can show okay. you later. But um, my friend uh, Crystal in the in the picture, she was helping me put it back on. And I mean, but the the, the regular crowning photo was the same face. I was so happy. Oh, good. I was. It was just like a dream come true, just being able to represent Hawaii at Miss Chinatown USA. I'm so blessed to be sitting in between two Miss Chinatown <laughs> USA right now. Three generations <laughs> here, okay, <laughs> girls. But it's funny you say the crown fell off, because things happen. I don't, back, back to that black and white photo of Ooh. me, if you zoom in really tight, um, when the lady before me, the, the, the queen before me, crowned me, her hair, she had this gorgeous, massive hair, and when she came over, my eyelash got stuck in her hair. <laughs> So when she pulled away, um, I don't, um, it pulled off half of my eyelash. And you know how false eyelashes when you drive and you pull it off, you can't stick it back on. No. So you can't go like that. So close up, my eyelash was like this in all my well, photos. I think the girl who crowned me um, kept her gloves on. Uh -huh. So when she crowned, it, the crown was stuck in her gloves. So as she was pulling away, it just kept on tilting. Oh. So I don't think I have any pictures of the crown straight. I think it's like real gangster. It's kind of like, <laughs> yeah, 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 it's like side tilt. <laughs> so you have to kind of like balance it by tilting like your head that. the other way. It was straight. I just had to sit like that. Have you guys seen the Netflix show The Crown based on Queen Elizabeth? No. I'm, I've been watching that recently, and it's just kind of got me thinking. The concept of the crown. Are we kind of ridiculing the actual crown? Because think about how beauty pageants have become. But it really goes back to the old majesty days, the monarchy and the real crown. And it's, I mean, do they think we're such a joke that we use this beauty pageant to show beauty? But what, what does it mean to have a crown? And what does it mean to be a queen? What do you guys think about that? I mean, I think, I think it's, it's different for each representative mm -hmm. of the crown and as long as the girl or the pageant and the organization live up to what that symbolizes mm. I don't I don't see a so what does that mean problem. to live up to it what do you feel you have the pressure of doing when you have that crown being a positive role model mm -hmm. just, just morals right integrity exactly. what you do with the crown 
really defines your character. Mm. And it's not, I have a friend who says, who always says this, she says, it's not the crown who defines the girl, it's the girl who, who defines the crown. Okay. So, I yeah. mean, it's a huge responsibility. Right. Because no, whether you want, like to or not, you're in, the, you're in the spotlight, you're in the limelight. Right. And people will look at you. People like, people are attracted to, to shiny things. That's right. just yeah. human nature, yeah, 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 right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, so what you do when you have that attention is very important because um, when I was little, just seeing people in crowns, I, I was watching, you know, and I think as a little girl, as little, as just the youth really look up to people. Right. Like that. So what you do with your crown really can make a difference in someone else's life. So how do you influence a young girl who aspires? They see, oh, look at the Dede. She's so pretty. She has a crown on her head. I want to be her one day. But she sees the beauty aspect only. How do you um, make a young girl understand what it really means to carry that weight and responsibility, not just the beauty aspect? I mean, I think there are a lot of other uh, things that we do in the community that a lot of people don't see and um, yes guess they see the pageant aspect but right. they don't see us you know going to feed the homeless right. going to Waldorf and meeting reading. with adopted mm -hmm. children mm -hmm. yeah reading, reading to, children to children at schools and there are just so many things in the community that the title I guess and the Queen in Court are to uphold and that's part of our quote-unquote job. And that's not the first thing people see obviously. They don't yeah. know the behind the scenes. Yeah, that's actually yeah. my favorite part about pageantry. Like I do it for the community service. I do it because having a title makes you more visible mm -hmm. and I have a platform um, Bully Free Hawaii USA right. and with a, the with a title it's more efficient than when I, if I don't have it. So people, you have the power of attention. Right, the exactly, time, exactly. And you have to use that wisely. Mm -hmm. it's right. like celebrities. Yeah, yeah, they have, to they have a responsibility, mm -hmm. right? Everyone's watching. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that carries on, right? Even if you're, it's past your reign, you always have a title once you've been crowned. Yeah, and do you feel like you need to take that responsibility throughout your life? Sure. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Even after you pass the crown on, you're, you're right. still. You're, you're always. You're always a title holder. Right. Right. What are some ways that you've seen people abuse that title or power? Hmm. Like, have you seen? I mean. Getting discounts? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is that a bad thing? <laughs> Coupons at just, Walmart. Just, <laughs> <laughs> just, <laughs> just <laughs> bring <laughs> busting. <laughs> yeah. Just bust your crown out of your bag and put it on <laughs> before you have dinner or something. Three bananas <laughs> at Chinatown, <laughs> open market. <laughs> what? <laughs> so funny. What about boy issues? Because some, um, you know, you can attract a lot of attention being a beauty queen, but at the same time, there are some people who think, oh, she's on the pedestal. I can't reach her. I, 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 I'd love to meet her, but I don't know how to approach her. You know, that kind of thing. There's a lot of intimidation that comes with the title, too. Have hmm. you guys had any problems with boys? <laughs> no? I don't think so. I mean, no, not really. It's more so with yeah. little kids because I think they're... They're so, when they meet a princess or a queen for the mm -hmm. first time, it's just, a, it's like at Disneyland. I still get yeah. starstruck at Disneyland. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> so no boy problems? Um, or did it affect your love life being a queen? Mm. How about that? So? No. I no? No, oh, yeah. I don't. People saw you as the real you after? Oh, I'm sure. I mean, I've heard I, stories from friends who are title holders, and they've, they've said things like, uh, people go up to their boyfriends, they say, like, you know, you don't deserve her. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> the boyfriends get a harass. I mean, but, I mean, in terms of the actual title holder, I don't think. Or do you think, as a reigning queen, you can't have any associations with gossip and relationships? So you guys have to kind of keep yourselves so clean that, you know, what do you think? I think you try to, but I, like, I, like Steph said, I yeah. mean, I think all of that is much more attracted to you because of the position that you hold. And mm -hmm. sometimes people use that to either judge you yeah. or, you know, to have all these preconceived notions when they don't know. Mm -hmm. I kind of remember a, a, a vague memory of when I left, you know, the, after you're crowned and you have to walk out with all the public in your immediate crown. My boyfriend at the time from college was there in the audience with my family. And as I was walking out, it was almost like, Kind of a crossover, like, uh, see, uh, this is my new life now. <laughs> and I felt these like flashes of like my future, and it, he wasn't a part of it, which is mm. not being ambitious on my side, but I felt like now is a different phase. It, it's something else now. It's a new chapter in your yes, life. Yes, yes. 
and it wasn't intentional to say, yeah. okay, hey, I'm queen now, I can't be seen with you. It had nothing to do with that, but it was kind of weird how the crown did affect mm. how you see your life go moving forward. So, Steph, yours is coming up, another big pageant. Right, this I know. This is a national pageant. <laughs> yes, it's huge. I'm so excited <laughs> it is. to it really is. be able to represent Hawaii mm -hmm. yeah. on a national pageant. Actually, you mentioned um, there haven't really been that many mis uh, of representatives from Hawaii who made it through. Right, so actually, Dara's the last um, <laughs> Miss Chinatown in Hawaii to win the title. Wow. What is the history? How many from Hawaii have actually gone through? I have no idea. So just you I mean, and no, staff you, coming in. Yeah, you. I'm not from Hawaii, yeah. though. We're talking oh. like people from Hawaii, right? When uh, you entered, you I were... I was from San Francisco. Oh, I see. I don't know how like many. Jennifer Hall. You'd have There's to ask my lot. sister, Dana, who knows <laughs> okay. like trivia about every single pageant. You could ask her Miss Universe 1980, whatever, and she'll come up with the name. I'm probably the color of their evening gown. <laughs> She's oh, okay. amazing. Wow. She, you know, no, I know before, like, before Dara and before, before Dara's year, Hawaii used to win all the time. Oh. It, yeah, it was, and then suddenly we had this drought. I don't know why. Oh, I don't I'm know sorry. Why. I jinxed But we it. always, <laughs> no, we're <laughs> not <laughs> <jinxed. laughs> They're like, we need another Dara. <laughs> <laughs> wow, but you know, Steph's coming on to this. How do you feel about that upcoming new competition? Is there ways to prepare or do you have any questions for Dara? Or? No, I, I mean, for both no. of you, how, oh, okay. do you, how do you prepare mentally? I mean, I think, I've always been good at preparing myself mentally and spiritually, but I mean, and physically, but I mean, anything else that... How about a big tip, since we don't have that much time, each of you just give a big tip to yourselves and to each other of people who are going to be embarking on some huge competition like the Miss Chinatown pageant, of what to do to prepare yourself and what it means to be a confident competitor. Well, for Miss Steph, I would just tell you focus. I mean, you have it all. Like, you all can see this. <laughs> yeah, she has it all. She's amazing, beautiful, smart, eloquent, all of that stuff. Just focus and be yourself. I mean, that's what my parents always told me. Do your best and be yourself. Yeah. I would, something like that, I would just focus on myself and just focus on yourself. Don't worry about anybody else. Yeah. Don't go stalking yeah. the other the other girls. Yeah. You know, the, the more, the less you focus on yourself, the, the more unprepared you become. Right. And, Be yourself. and you psych yourself out. Yeah. You don't need that kind of energy. No, you've got the Own perfect energy, Steph. <laughs> so we're going to wish you perfect. the best of luck yes. in the upcoming Miss Chinatown USA pageant. Go Steph! Yay! Yay. So thank you.